morning everyone my topic is evaluation of external middle and inner inner ear pathologies using high resolution ct the modification of ct hrct provide the detailed minute anatomical details of complex temporal bone including the major blood vessels and nerves passing through it the main purpose of my study is to study the pathologies in the temporal bone anatomical variations congenital anomalies and tumors the temporal bone is a complex anatomical structure containing the organs of hearing and balance. Clinical examination of temporal bone pathologies is not sufficient owing to the prevalence, complications and recurrence of various lesions of the temporal bone. So imaging plays a major role in the management and treatment. Many imaging modalities are available for evaluation of temporal bone including plain radiographs, angiography, CSF analysis, air and non-ionic contrast gestonography. CT, 3D CT, and MRI. However, CT and MRI have largely replaced other modalities. So, my aim and objectives are to study the extent of middle ear infections and their complications, to evaluate temporal bone neoplasms and stage them, and to study the congenital anomalies of the ear according to compartment involvement, to assess the normal variation in the structure of temporal bone. The source of the data is almost comprised by 30 patients and I have studied for almost 12 months and it's a prospective study. All the patients have referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis with either suspected or diagnosed to have symptoms relating to temporal bone disease and patients are scanned in both axial and coronal planes. And the scanning has started from the lower margin of external auditory meatus and extended upward to the acute eminence of the superior semicircular canal as seen on the lateral tomogram. Coronal images were obtained perpendicular to the axial plane from the cochlea to the posterior semicircular canal. In case of bilateral temporal bone pathologies, each side was taken as a separate case. HRCT images will be evaluated in detail and findings were tabulated in proforma. Surgical findings were noted whenever patients are operated and clinical correlation and follow-up were done in the rest of the cases. The final diagnosis after correlating clinical imaging and surgical findings were taken as the gold standard. In our study, 18 were male and 12 were females, and out of which 28 patients had infections and only 2 patients showed acoustic neuroma. And coming to distribution of lesions, almost 7 patients showed features of external otitis media, and 5 patients showed features of cholesteatoma, and 9 patients showed mastoiditis, and 7 patients showed features of CSOM and only two patients showed acoustic neuron. Out of which we have seen that 13 patients presented with ossicular disc chain disruption. So this study assesses the usefulness of a preoperative high resolution CT scan in depicting the status of external, middle and inferior mastoid, pneumatization and also an anatomical variance. The present study was carried out with an aim to study any normal variation, congenital anomalies in the structure of temporal bone and to evaluate various infective pathologies of temporal bone and the complications with HRCT. Out of which, uh, this prospective study was carried out on 30 patients with majority of them being males and out of them, 28 persons who are 28 people showed infectious causes with mastoiditis being most common, followed by CSOM, cholesteatoma, external arthritis media and rest two of them were acoustic neuroma. Tukal et al. in 2015 in their study got 83.3% cases of cholesteatoma compared to ours where we got only 16.6% of cases as cholesteatoma. Out of which 18 cases were operated with 16 cases showing correct imaging, surgical and pathological correlation. Both the tumor cases were operated confirming our imaging findings. Out of the total 30 cases, middle ear ossicle disruption is seen in 13 cases and it's absent in 17 cases. Tukal et al. in their study got 66% of ossicular chain disruption, which was close to our study with 56.6% of cases. In our study, there are no congenital anomalies seen. Although sample size is the major drawback in our study, our study showed a good agreement between the imaging findings on HRCT with surgical and clinical pathological correlation with good sensitivity. And they conclude, I would like to conclude by saying that temporal bone anatomy is complex and high resolution CT of temporal bone is a boon for ac accurate diagnosis of pathologies and their complications. 
It also delineates the anatomical variation, hence helps in the surgical approach to be safe. The results of the present study showed good correlation between the clinical, imaging and surgical findings. Therefore, we conclude HRCT is the best modality for diagnosis and management of temporal bone pathologies. Here I have images which shows and in a uh, few examples of our study and this is a uh, soft tissue density in the right middle ear cavity with extension into the mastoid cavity and likely it is otitis media with oscular chain disruption. And this is a soft tissue density uh, with air foci seen in right auditory canal and mostly this is a cholesteroma. This is a soft tissue density in the right middle ear cavity with extension into the mastoid cavity and it's likely to be a chronic otitis media. And this is a soft tissue density noted in the right mastoid air cells only and this is owing to the mastoid itis. And this is a soft tissue density in the left external auditory canal, auricular and mastoid regions and it is this stand out to be an abscess. And thank you.